Hey there, everybody. Today we are making the rarely imitated and never duplicated bacon and eggs from Steakhouse 71 at the Contemporary Resort. So the first thing we're going to do is we are breaking out my favorite spice grinder. I used this for the pulled pork video a few weeks back. And we're going to take our ingredients and we are going to grind them up. So I'm going to take a second just to explain. I'm using my coconut sugar that I had from a few weeks back, but you can also substitute brown sugar. This is Szechuan peppercorns that I've grinded down, kosher salt, and also sometimes you find an ingredient and it feels like a cheat, but it's not. This is uh, Derek Wolf's maple bourbon uh, seasoning from Spiceology. It's actually perfect for this. And I'm also going to use a little bit of uh, maple syrup as the binder. If you watch my pulled pork video, you know I talk about a binder on the uh, meat to kind of hold the seasoning on, and that's what we're doing. So we're adding our two tablespoons of coconut sugar, our half a tablespoon of Szechuan peppercorn, our one tablespoon of kosher salt, and our one tablespoon of that maple bourbon seasoning mixture and we're going to get it all in there and we're going to put the top on here make sure it's all locked into place so this doesn't blow up all over me which would be fabulous and then uh, we're going to give this a grind so as i grind it now this is a quick 15 second grind you can see that kind of dust coming out of there and that's because it's made it into a really fine uh, seasoning powder so and again i'm going to use a shaker for this just because it's easier for me and i will again take this out of the shaker when I'm done, store it in a Ziploc bag in a cool area, write the name on it, date, all that type of good stuff. But this way it's nice and easy to apply to the pulled pork. So I'm going to give that a little clean and we are all set. Make sure I clean as we go to keep uh, Mrs. DVC Chef happy. So now we're going to take out the uh, pulled pork is going to be next. And what I'm going to do is we're going to get this on the cutting board. This is about, you're going to see in a moment here, this is about a one pound strip of pulled pork, uh, about an inch thick on the thickest point, maybe three quarters inch as it kind of tapers down. Um, that's very typical. It just looks like a giant piece of bacon, right? So I want to cut this into four equal sections. I'm going to do the best I can. And you don't always get it right, but so I'm going to spread it out. I'm going to look for that center point, give it a nice slice through. It, it is a little difficult to slice through sometimes because of the fat on top. It's a little high fat content, obviously, being pork belly. Uh, so it makes that a little tough sometimes. You're going to see me uh, kind of cut through this again. And now I have approximately four equal pieces. Keep in mind they are different uh, thicknesses. So they're going to shrink during the cook, depending on how much fat is in there. They're not going to look the exact same at the end. So if you don't get that, don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up. Next thing I'm doing, I'm just taking a sheet pan, because again, I'm trying to keep this relatively clean, especially with the seasoning. And that's just a piece of wax paper that I have on there. So we're putting the pork belly on it now. Give it a nice little pat. Good little pork belly. Good boy. Now, what I'm going to do now is take the my chef knife and give this kind of diamond scores. Uh, I did this with a pulled pork video a few weeks ago, if you recall. And we're going to slice it one way. We're going to give it a 90 degree turn. We're going to give it another slice just to i want to open that fat up a little bit i want to make sure the seasoning gets in there i also because we're going to smoke this i want to make sure that the smoke gets in there as well to you know really permeate through that fat and give us the best chance to have you know a really great depth of flavor for this so i'm just scoring these on all four uh reasonably quickly here and there's nothing that you have to do with this to make it perfect. Like do like I said, cooking is all about the love of doing it. Just have some fun with this. If it's not perfect, it's not perfect. If it cuts too deep, it's a little too deep. Don't don't necessarily beat yourself up. Don't look for perfection because that's the fun part of cooking is that perfection can be strived for but generally not attained, but it gives you something to kind of shoot for the next time around. There's my little, my little Ken talk, kind of like a TED talk, but way cooler. So now I have these ready. I'm going to flip them over. And if you noticed before, when I talked about the ingredients and on my ingredients list was an ounce of maple syrup. And again, I'm going to use this as my binder. So this is not something typical because 
if the heat's too high, you know, obviously anything with a high sugar content is going to burn. That's not what I'm going for here. I'm going for more of that sweetness to stay on there. And I'm going to be cooking this uh, for about five hours on 225 degrees constant. I'm not going to raise the temperature. We're going to have this on the Traeger smoker. I'm going to put the super smoke function on it to get some nice smokiness on there for the five hours. And I'm not going to wrap it either, um, which I would do with a brisket or if I was even doing pork belly burn ends, I would do. Um, I'm just going to let this low, truly low and slow for five hours. So now that I've coated each side, give it a nice rub with the maple syrup, I'm going to get my little wire racked pan ready. This is what I'll actually cook it on. And now we're going to take our seasoning and I'm going to coat this everywhere. I'm going to be super liberal with this. I not worrying about, you know, over seasoning this. You're not going to, it, and it's a nice fine uh, grind on it. So nice fine powder. It's going to get into everywhere. You know, at the end, we'll give it a little pat and we're also going to let this rest for about 15 minutes. Uh, much like you would do with any other meat that you're you're seasoning and then putting on a smoker. So I'm getting all angles, all the sides, bottom, top, um, basically everything. There'll be extra seasoning on the sheet pan that has the uh, wax paper on top. I will give it a little pat into it. I'll give it a roll around into it, make sure. I really just want this thing fully seasoned. Um, so now, in the blink of an eye, we are going to spray down the uh, wire rack just so you know there's a lot of fat content in this in this it wouldn't stick but just in case i do like to use that uh, duck fat spray just because i think it has a nice little flavor um, underneath you can use regular cooking spray you can use anything you'd like you can use olive oil you can use nothing if you want but it just may stick so again just getting all that seasoning on there why waste it right it's already on the it's already on the paper we're gonna dab those up and we're gonna put this on the wire rack and we are going to let this rest while we turn the Traeger smoker on. Get that up to 225 Super Smoke. So now we've let that rest about 15 minutes. You can kind of see there's going to be a little liquid coming out of it. You'll see the color of the seasoning gets a little darker. That's from the moisture. That's completely normal. Uh, we've got it over here at the smoker. I always use my nice clean internal probe. Uh, I put it on the thickest piece because I want to achieve 210 degrees on this cook or anywhere between 208 and 210, that's what I'm shooting for. Now we've just moved over to the egg portion of the bacon and eggs. And what I'm using here, you can see it was set for 147 degrees. This is a sous vide immersion circulator. So all I'm really doing here is this immersion circulator. I picked this up for about $99 a few years ago at Target into just a big pan of water, big bucket of water. This is actually made for sous vide because it'll have a little slot in the top. But uh, you can really use anything. You can use a pot. You can use, you know, I mean, a large bowl maybe. You want to have some nice depth in there. Um, and what these immersion circulators do, not only to, do they bring the temperature of the water up to exactly where you want them to be, they also uh, kind of circulate the water around, almost like a fish tank. So this is what's going to happen is we're going to put these in here. Um, I like my eggs a little bit more cooked than uh, you know maybe you might be used to i don't like them overcooked but i don't like them super runny i suppose and also when you make these i'll talk about it later there's going to be a little custard factor in the way we cool these down but i'm going to have these in here 147 degrees for a minimum of 90 minutes but you can go over with this you can you can actually take this as long as uh as long as you want really um, anywhere under four hours. And these sous vide machines are circulators. I don't even call this a machine. It's kind of a wand. This um, sous vide piece of equipment uh, is fabulous for a lot of things. You can do steaks with these. This is how a lot of your high-end steak houses actually do their steaks. If you go to blah, blah, blah that you've, you know, spent $115 at for a nice uh, ribeye, this is probably how they're bringing them to at least temperature to rare and then they finish them and sear them and maybe bring them to temp from there. So, and you can kind of see, I just wanted to illustrate what the circulator is doing. It's, it's moving the air. You can even see the little bubbles in there. You can see the eggs moving. Next, we're going to make our grits. So I'm using uh, Tillamook uh, cheesy grits. So we have two cups of water, one cup of milk, 
one cup of these uh, corn grits, you'll see. This is a, just a brand uh, red mill that I picked up in the store. And also a brick of uh, Tillamook cheddar cheese. It's a really nice creamy cheese. Uh, it's, it's great for cooking things like this because there's enough moisture in it as you're cooking it and as you're letting it simmer with the grits that it's not going to dry anything out. It's not going to become over salty like, you know, some like maybe Parmesan cheeses would. And it's not going to be too, you know, loose almost or water like, you know, like a mozzarella would be. It's got a really nice texture to it, really nice flavor to it. And it makes, in my opinion, for the perfect cheesy grits. And I believe this is also what they use at Steakhouse 71, or at least they did the last time I was there. So we're gonna basically combine these ingredients. We're gonna shred, I'm gonna shred this cheese down. It's three ounces of it that I generally use. It's a little less than uh, half of this brick of cheese, but we're gonna bring this all out to the outdoor griddle and that I use as kind of my stove top when I'm cooking. Again, trying to keep everything clean. Um, and then we're gonna start there to get the grits going. And I'm excited, I, you know, yeah, I don't eat grits a lot. Um, you like them regular creamy or al dente? Okay, if you get that joke, you've seen uh, my cousin Vinny. Um, I don't have grits a lot, but when I do, I really enjoy it. And this is actually the perfect dish for it. And how the egg will turn out is gonna... Okay, uh, there is one ingredient that I did not talk about, just two pats of butter. Uh, because what is better than butter when you're cooking anything really, especially when you're cooking grits? So we have the butter melting there. We have our 16 ounces or two cups of water from my mason jar. Then we're going to add our one cup of just regular milk. Uh, I believe this is 2%. This is what we had. I'm sure you can use whole I wouldn't use skim, it might be a little too watery. If you're gonna do this, you might as well just use water. So we're gonna add the wet ingredients uh, to the butter pats, heat it up. This is, I have this side of the griddle on full temperature. So as you can see here, uh, it's starting to come to a rolling boil. So I basically keep one side of my griddle off and one side um, on high to boil so that way I can slide it over and control the temperature. Now I'm adding our one cup of corn grits and I'm gonna get start giving this a stir. Uh, basically what I want to avoid here is you know lumps. Anytime you take things like you know if you can imagine if you've used grits you know this oatmeal um, things like that if you even flour into hot water I don't know if you'd really do that but you, you know just think that it would clump up so that's what I'm trying to really avoid here. I'm trying to get all the lumps out you know like a good thin um, you know good good consistency good um, texture here that we're just trying to go with. I've heated it up and now I'm sliding it over to the offside just so now it can simmer because I still pick up about 250 degrees of residual heat on that side. Next what I'm going to do is our eggs have now been in here for uh, about 90 minutes. So with a slotted spoon I'm going to go in very carefully because the water is, I mean it's 147 degrees, it's pretty warm. Uh, I'm going to take the four eggs that I've made out and I'm gonna let these cool for about 15 minutes. Now, if you wanted a super, you know, more of a runny egg, then I would say wait for this step to the very last and then crack the egg immediately, which I'll show you how to do it when we get there. There's a little trick to it. And then put it right on the grits and you're done. And it'll, when you cut the egg open, it'll be nice and creamy inside. When you let this rest for about 10 minutes, it starts to come down to temperature and it's gonna create like a custard. So we're gonna let those rest and our next uh, task here is making our maple lacquer. And this is a very hot pan, so you wanna be careful. Uh, this is basically three tablespoons of coconut sugar you just saw me add, and about three ounces of maple syrup. It's just a 50-50 mix. And I'm gonna stir this together, I'm gonna to incorporate this I'm going to get it off the off the high heat as soon as the um, brown sugar or coconut sugar, if you're using it, dissolves a bit. And so I've actually lowered the heat here just so, you know, I can control it a little bit. Um, this is a cast iron pan. It's going to conduct uh, heat very well. And if you keep this on super high heat, it could bubble over. And I don't know if you've ever had anything sugary like uh, caramel or even maple syrup. 
bubble over onto something like your stove, uh, it is an absolute nightmare to clean. So I am always very cognizant about the, anything that, I, that I'm boiling with high sugar, just because I know it makes a mess if, I, if I'm not careful. So like I said, I've lowered the heat here, but I'm gonna let this remain on simmer. I'm gonna actually move my grits back, slide this over somewhat to the, uh, you know, the, the almost off side. I am, like I said, picking up some residual heat over there, so it's gonna be a nice slow simmer. And we want that to... Okay, so I've had the grits on the griddle for about 15 minutes now. Um, off camera, I did uh, incorporate the uh, Tillamook cheese, three ounces of that shredded, and just blended it through right before coming over here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the grits and for the last 15 minutes of their cook, I'm going to put them here in the smoker, catch some of that nice smoky flavor in there. Uh, it's gonna be a nice little added element to it and it's real smoke instead of using like liquid smoke or something for flavoring. So now I've taken my grits off, put them back over here on the griddle. I have my maple lacquer sauce. I'm also searing up the pork belly just a little bit. I want some nice crispy edges on this. So I'm gonna, just on low heat, I'm gonna give this a little sear, or low medium heat, I should say. A little sear. You can see that sauce is bubbling up, that maple lacquer sauce. And what I'm gonna do next, just to make things a little bit easier when I am uh, doing this, I got my nice insulated glove and I'm gonna very, very carefully pour this into this little serving glass. I would suggest using two insulated gloves when you do this. Um, I often joke that my hands are made of asbestos from touching so many hot plates in my life. However, you, you do not wanna burn yourself, so be careful. Last kind of prep step is I'm gonna take the eggs. These, like I said, I've been sitting here for about 10 minutes and I'm gonna very carefully crack them open. You're gonna get a lot of liquid in here uh, from the egg white that, you know, it's, you're not gonna use it. Um, you're really just going for that egg yolk uh, with a little bit of white around it, but you can see just the way we've cooked this in the sous vide, it's not high temperature, so you get a little bit of liquid in there. So now what we're gonna do, we've grabbed our plate, we have put our nice seared piece of pork belly on it, with a nice little couple spoonfuls of grits with my slotted spoon so I don't take up all that liquid I don't necessarily want. I'm gonna take my egg yolk and I'm gonna place it right on top of this. I love this presentation um, because it really looks like an egg <laughs> over the grits. And then now I'm gonna uh, just add on my maple lacquer uh, that reduced down maple syrup and sugar. And this is just actually chili oil that I had in the fridge and I'm just doing a couple dollops around just for a little presentation. All right, it is time to give this a try. So I'm super excited. This is one of my favorite dishes down there. You can kind of see the egg is, you know, what I like about this presentation is it makes the uh, grits look like the egg whites and the yolk, because a lot of the egg white kind of dissipates when you're making it, as I said earlier, it makes it just look like an egg. And then this is just, like, let's talk. Oh yeah. Nice and crunchy on the outside from when we seared it. So tender on the inside. I mean, pork belly, anytime you put it on a smoker for five hours at low heat, you cannot mess it up. I'm gonna give this egg a try. You can see it's nice. It's pretty well cooked in there. Don't like it super runny, but there's a little run to it, which I like. Oh. And it's like custard. It's by cooking it that long, you know, keeping it at that temperature for the 147 degrees for the 90 minutes, and then letting it sit out for 15 minutes to kind of slowly come back to temperature. It really does come out like custard. So, gonna dig the rest of this. Thank you so much. If you liked what we do, please subscribe. If you are not a fan yet of DVC Fan, please like the page. And if you get any comments, Please leave them below. My girl Luna's here. She knows what's up. All right, this is awesome. Not mad about this at all. Thanks. Have a great week. Take care.